Hello and welcome to another exclusive review by me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where we just hit 63 million minutes viewed on YouTube. We're in London for DreamWorks, The Prince of Egypt, a brand new musical at the Dominion Theatre. I have to say I was excited to see this production. It's a Stephen Schwartz score, and I couldn't wait to visit the Dominion. The last two productions have been flops. We didn't like Big. We weren't impressed by White Christmas. And this is a huge disappointment too. I have no idea what I just endured, but it is one of the most laughable theatre experiences in my career. It's sort of 50% rip-off of Joseph at the Palladium, 30% Panto, 20% Bombay Dreams, and the rest Bemusement. There is literally no set to this show. It is a beautiful light show with projection. That does not make it a West End hit in my view. I don't know what's going on in London, but they seem to think they can rip audiences off with these substandard productions that are basically nothing more than sung through shows with great lighting. This is no reflection on the talent, they're wonderful, but there's been some bizarre choices in The Prince of Egypt. For a start, the choreography is bewildering at times, rolling around on the stage, jumping on top of each other. It's like some bonkers dance class where we're all trying to do innovative dance for 2020. It didn't work for me. In terms of the story, I just couldn't follow it and cared even less. Some of the worst acting I've ever seen on a West End stage, bizarrely, there's also an issue that they all seem to look the same and you can't quite work out who's playing who and what's making what point and why they're even making it in the first place. I just didn't get it. I was often just left thinking I've seen better pantos. It's sort of got a little feeling of Aladdin in it. Maybe a little bit of The Lion King at times, certainly nick bits of that. But it hasn't got any Disney magic. I know DreamWorks isn't Disney, but surely it's trying to make miracles come true when you believe. Well, that certainly wasn't how I felt. Where this show does shine is the orchestrations and the harmonies. My God, Stephen Schwartz is just a genius. Those beautiful spot-on harmonies are incredible. Epic sound, anthemic. But you ask yourself, what are they singing about? It just all seemed like it was a big audition for some cheap West End. I want to be in a musical competition where every song crescendos into the rafters for seemingly no reason. It's sort of crammed with 11 o'clock numbers for no purpose, right from the very beginning as well, which is bizarre. The set truly is laughable. Well, there isn't a set. It's basically projection and amazing lighting. That's not good enough when you're billing this as one of the most spectacular musicals in history. I mean, they've spent a fortune on advertising. I was listening to Heart London last night and there it was, every single ad break. Why didn't they put that money, tens of thousands of pounds into the show? Just blows my mind. I think this would have been better if it was just a big orchestra and sung through with just a nice pin focus. We don't really need it. It's the story of ancient Egypt as two young men raised together as brothers in a kingdom of privilege find themselves suddenly divided by a secret past. Obviously it's a love story. One must rule as Pharaoh, the other must rise up and free his true people and both face a destiny that will change history forever. So it's just a huge, great big whopping story really with one amazing song. When You Believe is incredible of course and it's really been sung better. This Whitney Houston classic is the moment we're waiting for. I didn't get to it. I left you in the interval. Bored stiff. I'm sorry. Life's too short. When you buy a ticket, you buy an opinion and the right to leave if you're not enjoying it. However, let's give some kudos to the cast. The show is led by Luke Brady and he does a great job singing almost every song and he's certainly tested in this piece. It's hard to understand how he'll get through eight shows a week. These are anthemic numbers, big, that get bigger and that's just before the interval. Luke has delicious arms and that's about the size of it really. I mean, he gets to sing loudly and a lot and that seemingly is enough to impress. Huge round of applause for his many performances. Liam Tame plays Ramesses and again gets to shine vocally whereas Christina Lardo closes Act 1 with a beautiful sound. What a talent. Alexia Kadami, well, of course, she's old school from Wicked. Lemmy's and never fails to impress as Miriam. Lovely to see Gary Wilmot back on a stage, but honestly, I preferred him in a frock in Panto. Always a pro and a fantastic actor. That's one thing that's lacking in this piece. It may be vocally magnificent in places, but it certainly does not shine as a piece of theatre. The ensemble work incredibly hard and they've got great precision with choreography, but I just don't get the choreography. It's laughably silly at times, rolling over each other, sliding across the floor. It's all a bit auditioning for summer theatre school in my book, but there you are. What do I know? The book is probably the worst thing of the show. The best thing is Stephen Schwartz harmonies and the company do a fantastic job to bring these alive. Huge kudos to Mike Billings, the lighting designer, who's done an amazing job. Gareth Owen on sound is great, but at times it was wispy. I can't understand why the 
these theatres, especially barns like the Dominion, don't turn it up so we can hear it. I was struggling to hear the words at times, not that they were worth hearing, but for Christ's sake, turn the microphones up. Let us hear what they're singing. Musical direction was fantastic. The orchestra were lovely. I don't know. I just didn't care. And that's a shame because I wanted to love The Prince of Egypt running now at the Dominion Theatre opening the 25th of February 2020. We wish the cast well. It deserved to be a spectacular show and it just isn't. Honestly, save your money and go and see a fabulous panto and bring this show back as an orchestrated piece of grand theatre. Then I'll come back and enjoy every second of it. Simply in London, there are too many choices that are better. That's my conclusion. You've been listening to another review by me, Alex Belfield, here at celebrityradio.biz. Tenor.